you guys been following the new WHO treaty, the World Health Organization treaty, and some of the Mickey Mouse stuff that they're doing in there. This is uh, another way to put more and more central control on the human farm, the plantation of Slavelandia. And these things are always done in little increments. And then every now and then you get a great spurt of centralization. And a lot of times war is when a lot of this comes along, these great changes. After World War I, we had the beginnings of world government with the formation of the, and now I forgot the damn thing. And right after World War I, we had the formation of the League of Nations. And that didn't, didn't quite gain enough traction and all. And so after World War II, the Rockefellers donated a bunch of property up there in New York City. And, they, and the formation of the United Nations. Now, the premise was that the United Nations would be where all conflicts are resolved and the world comes together in Kumbaya. Well, that hadn't worked out too well, has it? The UN has facilitated more destructions and chaos throughout the world than, than peace and harmony. They've been able to create all kinds of genocidal mass murder campaigns in third world countries. A lot of this uh, World Health Organization, Bill Gates, you gotta hate these dinging cars. Every time you turn around, they're dinging about something, telling you something, like we're a bunch of damn idiots. I think we are. <laughs> it's an idiocracy. Remember the movie, Idiocracy, I thought it was fiction. <laughs> I'm beginning to believe it's a documentary. <laughs> Kinda like they live. Uh, you don't even need the glasses to tell who these people are. But the WHO, along with all kinds of NGOs, Gavi and all the Bill Gates organizations and all, have been experimenting on mankind, if you will, to figure out a way to sterilize or long-term kill or in big pharma, profits are made off of uh, sickness, disease, and not health and, and, you know, good welfare. It's kind of like the mRNAs, you know, they, they, those injections are, are not about making you healthy. They're, they're about making profits, long-term, short-term profits off of the slaves of Slavelandia who are in some cases worth more dead than they are alive because every slave on the plantation you know it, it is a commodity to be traded and you know you want to insure your your things and so it is that the corporation also uh, insures the cattle I mean you know if a if one of the chattel, if one of the uh, chattel dies, he can't produce any more 
profit for the corporation, and, and, and essentially it's a loss. So that's when the insurance pays off. Uh, these are things people don't consider because they don't consider themselves animals on the farm. And the pigs run the show. All, all animals are equal, but some more equal than others. The lessons of Animal Farm are as relevant today, perhaps more relevant today, than they were when that was written. It's amazing to see what has happened. And Carlin was right. George Carlin was right. He was pointing out the truth. And the best comedy, the best comedy is the truth. Look at Jimmy Dore. Now, Jimmy Dore is leftist as leftist gets. He believes, you know, that you can have free health care for all. And, and if, if you have good representation, you can have free health care for everybody and be happy. Well, on the other side, the R's, the Republicans, or the right side, they say, you know, oh, it's the welfare system and blah, blah, blah. And if we had good people in there, everything would be good. And we, both sides believe that if they had the right people in there, they can have good government. My position is government is never good. And it's like a fire. And if you don't control that fire, it'll burn everything around you, including you. And that's what comes right back to the chains. Putting the chains on this evil, this fire. I'm not sure that you can. I'm not, I am not convinced at all that there are enough chains that can be placed on this thing we call government, on a monopoly on violence, to hold it. The founder said you had to be a vigilant, moral people to keep the Republic. You know, Benjamin Franklin was quoted when the lady asked him, Mr. Franklin, what have you given us? And he said, a Republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. I often add that he probably chuckled. <laughs> because inevitably, there is no chain that can bind this evil. And so it metastasizes like a cancer, slowly and slowly and weakens the body. And then the next thing you know, get, you got stage four. And it's just running turbo cancer, a new term that we hear all the time now. But the United States of America has turbo cancer. Out of control government. The chains are off. There is no, no wall. There is, even right now they're talking about extending part of the Patriot Act, the FISA, the warrantless spying. And the funny thing is, it doesn't matter if they let that sunset or whether they authorize it or, or not. Because the state is so out of control now, 
that it is on cruise control of self-destruction and murder. But the interesting thing about that is that your owners, the plantation owners of Slavelandia, and all the Slavelandias around the world, 195, 6, whatever the hell it is now, all of them are just playing us to fool because this corporation is ready and in need of restructuring. What's going to replace it? Uh, maybe Russia's Slavelandia and China's Slavelandia, all of which they control anyway. Just think of it as a cartel of mafioso who, yeah, they have turf wars and all, but essentially they have their territories and they have their own management style and they have their own extortion programs and insurance, if you will. And they're all the time scrambling and all, but Overall, there's a godfather, if you will. And the godfather is the man that nobody seems to notice and nobody seems to care. What was it uh, Paul Harvey said one time? He said, uh, the greatest thing that the devil ever did is convince everybody that he's not real. That's it. He's not real. God's real, but the devil, he, 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 you know, he's not real. Good and evil, the spiritual battle that we're in. It's quite interesting. said oftentimes it's the six inches between your ears that is the where the war is taking place war is won by inches not miles and if you can confine confuse the owner of those six inches to the point where he, she, they, or them don't know what is and is not truth. Just like a computer, garbage in, garbage out. It's gonna reach the conclusion of those who control the information going in and out. That's where we're at. <laughs> so while we mess around and play around and struggle to play our bills and bitch, moan, whine, and cry about government this and government that and how high inflation is, and in the meantime, You're fed garbage in and spitting garbage out. <laughs> As the management of the plantation of Slavelandia begins the great call of the herd. <laughs> I got to go to work. I'll be back in a minute. We'll see y'all. If a government claims a right, and then their claim is that they derive these rights from the people, right? well, how can people give a group rights that they don't themselves have? 
to steal so, money. So right, if we yeah. if we can't yeah. tax people, like I can't tax you, yeah. where exactly does government derive this right from? It, it, and once you come to you realize that the the goal ought to be as voluntary a society as possible. Now, how exactly you achieve that, how far you can push that is debatable, but certainly that that should be the goal. That if government is providing a service for you, well then why does it need to be provided by force?